Hello everyone, it's Miranda with Multiplicity Crafts, designing for the Scrapbook Blessings Club. And I think you'll really enjoy today's video, so just keep watching. Today we are doing a vinyl record card for music lovers. Now we're going to begin by using the cuddle bug, or you can use a big shot. And I'm going to add a little bit of embossing. This is just dry embossing with an embossing folder. And this will add a little bit of texture to the background. This is a three and a quarter by four and a half size sheet of cardstock that I'm running through the cuddle bug machine. And after I run that through, it will imprint that texture on the paper. And you'll see here when I open the folder, it is nice and textured. And then we will go on and use a really fine grit buffer block. You can just use one that you would use for your nails and just lightly go over the surface of the embossing. This is optional. You don't have to do this, but it does add a little bit of a aged look to the embossing. It also seems to make the embossing stand out just a little bit better. It just kind of depends on the quality of paper you have, but remember, don't file too vigorously because it will tear the paper. Uh, you can kind of see here, it does give it just a little bit more of a aged look, and then it kind of helps it to stand out a little bit better. I'm just going to take a four and a quarter by five and a half size a sheet of white paper or cardstock and use my ATG gun and glue what I've just embossed onto the center of the white paper. Once the panel is adhered down to the base, I'm going to go ahead and start decorating. Now this circle I have cut, and I have a smaller circle, and you'll see the measurements there on the screen. And I'm just going to punch a hole right in the center of the smaller circle, and this will give the look of a vinyl record once it is adhered down. And you can use any color or design for your centerpiece, but I just thought the gold looked really nice. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue from my ATG gun and center that in place. In order to add a little bit of dimension to the card, I'm going to add some foam squares on the back of the record. And this will pop the record up off of the base of the card so it does look a little bit more 3D and add some interest to the card. I'm going to slightly overlap the record onto the white part of my card base as well. That way it kind of pulls everything together. Now these are three happy birthday dies that I have cut out with my cuddle bug machine or you can cut them out if you have a big shot and I'm just going to glue these three together to give a thicker texture to the sentiment. After you glue the three cardstock pieces together it almost feels like chipboard. It's really nice and thick and a substantial addition to your card. I am adhering these together with my Zig two-way glue pen. Once my happy birthday sentiments are all glued together, I will go ahead and use a fine tip sharpie and trace the inside to make the happy birthday embossing show up better. And you can see here, it just shows up better. It, it does go ahead and emboss it the first time with this particular die, but I like to go through after I'm finished with 
a Sharpie and that way the sentiment shows up better. And I am adhering it down with my Zig two-way glue pen. I'm going to center that on my card and press it into place. I'm going to use some photo corners. These are very easy to find at your craft store. And I'm going to frame the card with these photo corners. This is a top folding card, as you can see. And this is what it looks like with the photo corners in place. I'm going to be using a small punch, and it's a music note punch. I've already punched some little black music notes out of cardstock, and I'm going to just glue those intermittently all over the front of the card again with my glue pen. And I think that adds a little bit of a nice background and it helps it not be so plain. It also kind of gives you more of the idea that that is a record in case there's any confusion. <laughs> but the music notes I think are super cute because they're so tiny. And I'm going to add a little bit of glossy accents on the record. Now if I had to do this over again, I probably would have added the glossy accents before I adhered the record down with the foam squares. The reason I say that is because it did seem to warp just a little bit when it was up on the foam squares rather than it drying flat. So if you do this project or something similar to this, you might want to do that first. Also, you might want to take a straight pen, and since we're using so much of the glossy accents, you're bound to have air bubbles. And so just use a straight pen to pop those little air bubbles, and it usually kind of self-levels after that. If not, you can help it along with the end of the straight pen. I'm just showing a few examples here of some little air bubbles that I had and how I easily got rid of those with the straight pin. This is a little bit tedious and labor intensive, so if you don't want to add the glossy accents on your card, it still looks fine without it. I just thought it looked nice for the record to have a little bit of added shine on there. And this is what the glossy accents will look like when it's still wet. And you'll notice it kind of has a little bit of a, almost a blue tint to it at this point. But once it's dry, it will dry clear, and it makes your record look black and shiny, just like this. So here's the finished card. I think it turned out really nice, and I had a lot of fun making this. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up on my YouTube channel, as well as subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.